Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. So I recently took a class on Skillshare by Claire Liu, who is the CEO of Know Your Team, and has completely changed the way I view my own team and how to lead them remotely. And so in this video, we're going to have a look at the four reasons why working remotely is difficult, and I'll present four tips and takeaways that I've gotten from this class to enable our teams to basically stay more focused and generally be more happier whilst being productive at the same time. Let's get into it. So basically with office restrictions due to COVID over the last short while, you see companies have sort of A and B teams, and this actually makes working remotely quite difficult in 2021. We sort of broken it down into four main areas where you as a leader or your team may sort of experience this from working remotely. Number one, loneliness and lack of collaboration. So 20% of remote workers say that the biggest downside of remote work is actually loneliness. This is according to Claire Liu and also Carlos Quintana of Beeble Blog. Links in the description below. So generally there's no workers in your house. There's no employees, no colleagues in your house, um, making bouncing ideas off each other very difficult. There's lack of interaction uh, with coworkers makes actually team building uh, very difficult as well. So point number two is distractions and lower productivity. I think this generally speaks for itself, but it more leads to sort of point number three, where you see managers micromanaging their teams or overreacting a bit too much, over controlling, uh, simply because they don't know how productive the team is. You can't just get up in the room, have a look around and see how productive the team is. You know, you have to communicate through email, apps and tools etc so there's a bit of um, not not enough reassurance i think for the manager uh, that the team is actually productive and claire Liu sort of puts it out that you know constant communication really leaves no room to get real work done and i agree with that and also harvard business review also says that you know generally negative attitudes about this form of working seem to spill over into the way managers perceive their own employees as well. Quite a few managers reported not trusting the competence of their own employees, uh, with also one third questioning whether their employees had the required knowledge to do the work. Um, more than one quarter agreeing that their employees lacked essential skills, although the picture is not a rosy one, suggesting a substantial number of the managers have low confidence in their capability to lead remotely and have sort of rather negative views about this work practice and distrust their workers. That's from Harvard Business Review. And so it sort of brings into the questions, you know, how do you actually prevent burnout from people once you're, as a manager, if you're loading them up too much? And how do you actually keep track of work that's being done uh, without micromanaging? Okay, so I think these are actually quite, quite significant issues. What are the solutions? And point number four revolves around trust. So you as a manager may have trust issues purely because you can't see the person face to face. Uh, you don't know if the member is able, capable, uh, whether their body language is confident or their tone of voice is confident in being able to get the job done. And also trust comes in the form of new members if they can trust you and you can trust them because they don't know you that well, simply because you haven't met. So onboarding new members is also one of the issues uh, and concerns actually from working remotely. So basically the problems are quite real. Uh, managing remote teams is a different skill set, not uh, similar to the traditional way uh, in the office space. And we sort of need to ascertain how do you actually build a solid remote working environment. And it's a process that actually comes with many challenges. But here are sort of four tips that I got from the class as well as the website. Tip number one, this actually evolves around building trust. And there's sort of three different areas that we want to put extra emphasis on building trust, such as showing vulnerability, uh, making intentions clear, and also keeping commitments. And sort of in a remote work environment, these actually have to now be extra emphasized uh, to your members of your team. Tip number two, this focuses around productivity and meetings. So the research sort of says if the meeting can be put on writing, you don't need to meet, which actually increases productivity and time. But there are sort of six meetings that actually these are applicable to. So if you categorize them, they are status updates, decision making, problem solving, 
team building, info sharing, and innovation. And so Claire goes on to say, okay, well, do these meetings actually need you know, to meet in person on the video, or can they be actually simply done by email or do it done in writing? Okay, tip number three actually evolves around being busy. And Claire says sort of being busy does not equal good. You actually need to make extra effort to make time for your team to make sure everybody's on track and communicate properly. Tip number four is actually being nice. And if you're being too nice or too empathetic because of the circumstances, this could actually work against you as well. And she goes on to you know, talk about giving difficult feedback, uh, if you have disagreements, if you need to fire someone remotely or give a praise. You know, doing all this remotely is actually quite difficult and stressful. So then she goes on to saying, well, actually you should refocus on yourself and what your team is counting on you for. Uh, why are you, you know, feeling this way, feeling uncomfortable, you know, one of the worst possible outcomes, and sort of refocus on how to help the team achieve the ultimate goal. So besides identifying the difficulties with working remotely, as well as leading a team remotely, and some key areas to focus on, I actually went to her website, knowyourteam.com, and had a look at sort of what else was there. And I came across, you know, many, many different tools, and all sort of focused around the word communication. So on her website, she has this Know Your Team method, which basically evolves around different tools that she has on offer. And it sort of encompasses, you know, scheduling items, uh, but more specifically, how to com communicate certain messages more appropriately. And uh, she sort of categorizes those into different types. Uh, you know, we have heartbeats, social questions, culture questions, and things like that. And then she has, you know, a lot of online managers that are linked together, as well as a massive uh, database that is actually uh, backed by research. I've actually found this quite interesting and, you know, it's very organized, sort of like a blueprint on how you can manage your team. Uh, what particularly caught my eye was when you actually schedule a meeting uh, with a person, there's actually a lot of questions on the side that you can ask. And this question bank, you know, if you're like me and you sometimes don't know what to ask, a lot of these actually prompt you and you can sort of just drag them across and use those as examples. So these questions basically allow a manager to communicate more effectively, prepare for the meeting more effectively, have the team member on board on what's going to happen during the meeting, sort of set the tone for the meeting, as well as you know cover what you want to talk about. So Claire actually goes into quite a lot of detail for how she classifies her communication. She has one-on-one -on -one meetings, she has heartbeats, which are sort of like, what are you doing today? Uh, culture questions, which is like, how do you feel about our priorities or how do you feel about our projects? And also social questions, which are non-work related. And I think this is actually a big difference to the traditional way in which we use apps to assist us, which are task-oriented, project timeline, deadlines, assigning tasks to you know, different team members. I personally use Asana. But, you know, there's no difference between Asana, Monday.com, Notion, and Evernote. So I think all of these lack a bit of the soft skills. And it's very nice to see that Claire has this in her uh, platform for us to use. So in summary, Claire's work has certainly changed the way I look at my team and how I should manage my team. I think that, you know, to be more effective, you need to sort of focus on three certain areas as a summary. And number one goes around sort of building trust and you know, being honest. I think with various ways of you know, being empathetic, you know, setting clear intentions to your team and commitments, I think that needs to be there at the onset. So with trust, then we can kind of have a look at a little bit of productivity where you know, she defines certain meetings. You know, not all meetings need to you know, be in front of a camera. A lot of it can be assigned to writing. And then lastly uh, is communication. You know, having those different questions to be able to talk to your team, uh, to be able to ask those questions, uh, keep them on track. And if you can't think of them, you know, she's got the tools to give you a lot of suggestions in this area. So as a plug, Skillshare and Claire both do not sponsor this video. I've put their links in the description below. And that's it for this video. If you have any information that you'd like to share, any strategies that you've used, any problems that you've encountered, uh, I'd love to hear about them. 
uh, please, please um, put them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.